Magic the Gathering. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Throne of Eldraine Magic the Gathering pre-release weekend, where we get to delve into looking at some of these really cool fairy tale themed cards. Fantasy cards with a twist and some brand new mechanics. Can't wait to check it out. Let's crack this wide open. So let's see what foil date stamp card we got. Ooh, Faber Elder Vigilance. And it gets plus one, plus one for each color among permanents you control. And you can tap to add an additional mana of that color. What a great mana ramper. Let's have a look at some of the green cards I cracked. Well, I didn't crack anything like Questing Beast or the Great Henge or even Once Upon a Time, but these green cards already look pretty sick. We've got Yorvo, Land of Garenbrig, which is three forests, which kind of fits well in a mono-colored green deck. Here's a little sample of the uh, Three Little Bears, uh, Flaxen Intruder, and some of the adventure cards that appear in the set, which is a new mechanic that I'll probably chat about later. So, so far, I'm really loving the theme of this set, more so than I actually thought I would. I also like how there's a greater focus on tribal giants and tribal knights in this set. May I draw your attention to the common land card, Mystic Sanctuary. What a great fetch card where you can take an instant sorcery card straight from your graveyard and put it on top of your deck. Beautiful flavor. So I decided to play a black-white deck. I don't think it really worked for me that much. I don't think my Charming Prince was really charming enough. Uh, there were some interesting strategies of using flying creatures with evasion, but that Clackbridge Troll uh, was probably the biggest bomb that I could pull from my pack and it created some really cool waves in my game and I just really love that card. But um, yeah, definitely uh, interesting mechanics. I had some really powerful opponents who played red-white and had some knights in there and lots of uh, damage done. So definitely cool array of cards which I can't wait to check out and talk about more in more detail. What I really love now is that you can actually buy the booster boxes at the pre-release events and take them home. Sick! So, I am back from the pre-release and we are about to look at some of the cards that I was able to open from the pre-release events this particular weekend. Let's go check them out. When you buy a Throne of Eldraine booster box, you get this really awesome Kenrith, the Return King foil magic card. I love how in this card, he's a 5-5, five five, and each of his special abilities go from one converted mana cost to two, to three, to four, to five, and they include all of the five different mana colors featured in magic. In this particular magic set, Wizards of the Coast have introduced a new type of booster, the 15 card collector booster packs. And they cost a little bit more than the regular boosters and they feature some really cool alternative art that you may or may not be able to open in some of the regular booster packs. We are about to open one of these right now. Let's open this little beauty. And Garrick's shiny face is on the front. Looking like he's ready to be ripped open. Going to unpeel this to see what is inside. I love this alternative border art on this Merfolk Secret Keeper. This is the treasure that we're looking for. That is so sick. That alternative Queen of Ice art is so cool. It's like... Elsa's completely transformed into this other Ice Queen. Fairy Guide Mother. Oh, that alternative art just really has a great flavor to it. Arcane Signet. This could be another staple card that could go in any Commander deck. A Borderless Questing Beast Mythic Rare. That's amazing. Stone Coil Serpent Foil Borderless. And a Human Token. So before we look at some of those pre-release cards that I cracked open, we are going to have a look at some of the brand new mechanics that Throne of Eldraine introduces into Magic the Gathering. When players open those boosters for the first time on the pre-release weekend, players are going to be first greeted with this idea of the adventure mechanic. And basically it really gives players extra options and extra timing effects for when they want to actually cast particular spells. So if we look at this Fairy Guide Mother, players could pay one planes to just cast as a 1-1 flying creature. But if it is in the late game or uh, players want to do like a really cool trick, players can instead cast it for its adventure cost. So you could play it as a sorcery for one generic mana, one plane, and give another target creature that you currently have on the battlefield plus two, plus one and flying, 
until end of turn. Now, if you're paying for its adventure cost, it goes straight from your hand into exile, and then later on, so you can cast this creature from exile later on and bring it back out to the battlefield. Each of these adventure cards has a dual function to it. And not only is it thematic like this, create three two two green bear creature tokens, uh, not too hot, not too cold, it's just right. So the idea that I could play this late game uh, to create three bear creature tokens and then also bring out Flaxen Intruder later on from Exile and garnering its extra effect means that I can better time some of my moves. Um, I've got more options that I can have in terms of using and managing the cards and building the synergy in my deck. The Adamant Mechanic is the second new mechanic introduced in the Throne of Eldraine Magic set. The Adamant Mechanic is triggered when players spend at least three of the specified mana to cast the particular spell, which provides players with an extra booster bonus effect for actions. So basically rewards players for spending the same type of mana. And so this is really useful when it comes to deck building because this particular mechanic really promotes mono-colored decks. Decks which just uses one color. So if I just build a mono red deck, you know, using this adamant mechanic will help to boost and bolster the actions that I use in my gameplay. One of the extra bonuses that players can earn by triggering the adamant effect includes adding extra counters onto their creatures, creating food tokens, or even drawing extra cards. With the commencement of this new set comes the introduction of the food token. So the food token kind of reminds me of the treasure tokens. Players who create food tokens will pay to, they'll tap the food token and sacrifice the artifact to gain three life. Now, food tokens are quite useful in quite a lot of different ways. For example, uh, food tokens will, first of all, get, give you three life. But if you've got cards like Tempting Witch, where if you sacrifice the food token, you can actually make another player lose life. If you've got this Savvy Hunter, you can use the food tokens to draw cards. So the food tokens kind of act as like little utilities that kind of give you extra little bonuses and um, effects that kind of allows you to gain a card advantage or a life advantage. Or With food tokens comes the introduction of a brand new legendary planeswalker. It's Oko. For plus two loyalty, you create a food token. For plus one loyalty, target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with base, power, and toughness 3-3. Take away five loyalty, gets exchanged the control of target artifact or creature you control, and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less. The His three abilities are quite ingenious, actually, because food tokens are artifacts. He can actually turn those food tokens into 3-3 three, three elk creatures. He can then exchange the control of those 3-3 uh, three, three elk creatures with other opponent's creatures, which really kind of evokes that um, mischief and that sense of like trickery that I think this uh, Oko Thief of Crowns kind of evokes. You can also turn other players' target artifacts, especially in EDH, into 3-3 three, three elk creatures, which can nullify any powerful mana rocks that they might have. The pre-release, I was able to crack some pretty cool cards. I'm going to feature some of these cards for you. So this is not a complete set overview. These are just a sample of cards that I thought were particularly interesting in the pre-release bundle that I got. Crashing Drawbridge. It is a artifact creature wall with Defender. It's 0-4, but its main special ability here, which I really like, is that when you tap the wall, creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. This is going to really increase the tempo of the way creatures can attack your opponents and the, how quickly players can bring out an Eldrazi creature in an EDH deck and then tap this and swing the Eldrazi creature straight over to your opponent and really make it very hard for it to be stopped. Yorvo, Lord of Garenbrig, it is three forest mana to cast and in this deck 
brings a whole range of legendary creatures that are three of the same mana color. And it really pairs well with the adamant keyword effect because I think in this set, they really want players to try and experiment more with monocolor decks. So Yorvo Lord of Garenbrig enters the battlefield with four plus one counters on it. Whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on Yorvo. Then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's power, put another plus one counter on Yorvo. So Yorvo is a giant creature, which is just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. Then we have Linden the Steadfast Queen, which is three planes mana to be able to get out. She's got Vigilance, and whenever a white creature control attacks, you gain one life. So she's gonna be a really cool, um, you know, monocolored EDH deck to build around, or even a little Brawl Commander. We have lots of little white creatures, or white soldiers, and white knights, and getting them to attack is just gonna generate you a lot of life, and it's gonna really frustrate your opponent. In order to stop you, they're gonna have to disable Linden the Steadfast Queen in order to stop you from doing that, but it just sounds like a really simple yet fun card to build around, a Clack Bridge Troll. Three generic mana, two swamp mana, trample haste, and when Clackbridge Troll enters the battlefield, target opponent creates three zero one white goat creature tokens. I love it when magic brings back those goat creature tokens. And at the beginning of combat on your turn, any opponent may sacrifice a creature. And if that player does, Clackbridge Troll gets tapped and you gain three life and you gain draw a card. What I feel this card does is it brings in a really good moral dilemma. Either find a way to block the troll, especially because it's got trample as well, it's 8-8, eight, eight, or sack a creature and give the player who controls the troll another advantage. So do you take the damage? Do you find a way to block it? Or do you let the opponent gain three life and draw potentially extra card that are gonna help to advance their gameplay? And drawing card we know in Magic is one of the most powerful abilities that you can have. Mirror Maid. You may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield. So if you've got an EDH deck, you know, you can make a copy of Soul Ring or Gilded Lotus or a Mana Vault. That means you can tap Gilded Lotus and tap Mirror Maid for up to six mana. You get three mana of any one color. And if this is a copy of Gilded Lotus, you could tap this for another three mana of any color of your choice. Doom Foretold. It's an enchantment. Two generic mana, one planes, one swamp. At the beginning of each place upkeep, that play sacrifices a non-land, non-token permanent. If that play can't, they discard a card. They lose two life, you draw a card, you gain two life, you create a 2-2 two -two white knight creature token with vigilance, then you sacrifice Doom Foretold. So this card really tries to force the players to start uh, removing things from their board state. And whenever a player cannot do that, or at the moment when a player cannot do that, you get rewarded with a plethora of interesting abilities. This card can really synergize with a lot of cards in Magic history, and there are some combos out there that work with this card that cre can create infinite mana. And that is a special combo in itself. So this tree folk is really cool. And I can't wait to experiment with uh, using this card in maybe a modern deck or a EDH deck and trying to build those combos with this card. There you have it folks, that's a short little highlight of some of the cards that I was able to play with over the pre-release weekend. Some really good cards for EDH, Standard, and some really good synergies and combos that I can really try and work around uh, when I'm trying to modify or build some brand new decks for Magic. What I really like about this set is the fact there's an introduction of three new mechanics that don't really change the way you play Magic too much. I like how the adventure mechanic really gives players extra options, which means that the timing of resolving the spells and playing spells is actually quite crucial. Having those two different abilities and deciding whether to play an adventure or playing it as a creature card really means that the timing and how they work with the other cards in your deck and how they combo out is really crucial. And that makes me uh, that makes me feel a lot more satisfied as a magic player and a deck builder because I feel like that having those extra options means that I have different ways that I can kind of modify and guide my deck uh, in the way that I want it to be built. And it really fits in with the fairy tale and grim theme as well. 
I also like that this set really focuses on rewarding players that have monocolored decks. Using that adamant keyword means that players who only play in one color now get bonus effects for the combination of mana that they spend on a particular spell. I also really, really like Night Tribal. I like how this set really hasn't gone too far uh, left to filled with all the different tribes and just really focused on one tribe meaning that if you don't want to play knights You can really still build an open sort of style of deck one that kind of fits your gameplay Or if you really want to go tribal, you know knights are really quite strong in this set I also really like the new alternative art borders I think that's more like the icing on the cake and you know for those people that really love the art in magic and want to collect those cards that provides that beautiful avenue, but if you're just someone who wants to play, those cards and getting those cards just really adds that extra premium feeling to your deck. Now the thing that really interests me most about this new set is actually the Brawl decks. The ones that I think are sold out everywhere. I've only been able to get my hands on probably one of them, and if you can get your hands on those Brawl decks, that's probably a good thing because I couldn't find any of the others and they haven't even been released yet. So that's what I'm actually really excited to play with next because those Brawl decks in this new Brawl format that Wizards of the Coast have kind of tweaked from Commander and Standard. So it's, you know, each Brawl deck has its own little mini Commander card and you can play in multiplayers or you can play as two players. Those are the cards that I really want to play with next because I just want to see how they actually work. So this set has really gone far and beyond at the beginning, I was really hesitant about the fairy tale theme. Then I saw some of the preview cards. I saw the trailer with the gingerbread uh, couple. And after playing the pre-release weekend, I've really done a 180 and completely gone on board with this theme. I actually really, really love it. And, you know, it's one that I'm going to really uh, work with over the next couple of months and see what additions I can make to my decks that I've already got or to my deck building skills. Thank you once again for joining me for another Magic the Gathering vlog. It is a little bit of a sidetrack when it comes to my channel board game century, but magic is something that I passionate, passionately uh, really love getting into and I love sharing my passion for gaming with all the people out there. Thanks once again for joining me. If you really like this video, please remember to smash the like, subscribe and share button and I look forward to bringing you some brand new board game and magic related videos in the near future. This is Danny signing out. I'll see you guys again next time. Goodbye.